I'm absolutely delighted to have the chance to introduce to you two people who are really leading the delivery of a vision you've heard from Prime Minister May, from the Secretary of State yesterday, um, on artificial intelligence from the government perspective. So let me first introduce you to um, Dr. Rania Leontaridi. Uh, Rania is the Director of Business Growth at the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy. She's had that role since May 2016, leading the government's work to start up, grow and scale productive businesses in the economy. She also focuses on the role that technology plays in creating economic value and disruption in existing sectors, as well as the creation of new business and emerging sectors. She is the government's joint director lead for artificial intelligence and has been leading recently the AI sector deal and AI grand challenge, which we're going to hear a little bit more about shortly. I also wanted to introduce Gila Sachs. Uh, Gila has been the director for digital and tech policy at the Department for Digital Culture, Media and Sports since May 2017. She's worked in the civil service for 11 years in policy roles in number 10 and the Department for Business and Education, as well as being private secretary to the Prime Minister. There's really no two better people to talk to you about the detail of what's happening in the government on artificial intelligence. So to kick that off, I wanted to invite them to talk a little bit um, about what those policies are at government and the detail of both the industrial strategy and, of course, the sector deal as well. Rania, may I ask you to kick that off? Great. Thank you. And thank you, everyone. Thank you, Priya. And thank you to Tabitha and Charlie for inviting us here. It's a great pleasure to be in one of the most exciting AI conferences, I think, on the planet. So thank you. Uh, <laughs> They didn't pay me to say that. Um, so uh, let me start by saying that in government, we see AI as a grand challenge, and that is positive. We see it as a great opportunity, not only for the tech sector, but also for the whole economy. And that is why it occupied the center stage on our industrial strategy. Uh, it, we published the industrial strategy last year. Uh, it's about 150 pages long, but it's one of the most amazing documents I've read. At least it's readable. You know, you can go and have a, a look through it. Um, but what we've done is we try to focus on four long-term challenges. Uh, otherwise, it is not a strategy. So the four long-term strategies we focused on were on clean growth. How do we actually lead the industries of the future on clean growth? Focused on how we look at the future of mobility, that putting the UK at the center of becoming the leader and how we move people around in the world. And also, how are we dealing with our aging society? What is the opportunities this create for taking as a grand challenge the aging society and see how we can lead in, in managing uh, uh, ourselves as we become older? But underlying all of this is the biggest grand challenge of all, the one we are here to talk about, which is the artificial intelligence and data grand challenge. And it is quite important because, as I said, underpins not only all the others, but becomes the vehicle for the role that AI will actually play in the economy. So we know the price is very big. We know you've heard the stats here, probably everywhere else. We're talking about a 10% of GDP increase by 2030 by some sources, but also remembering that sort of look about the whole economy, not just the tech sector. We're talking about productivity in some sectors increasing by about 30%. So huge uh, societal benefits, and the Prime Minister announced the uh, mission that uh, Gila will talk a lot more on detail later on. But what I wanted to say is that a lot of people said that you're being very ambitious, and I think that is quite important. We should be ambitious, and it is a great compliment for us. We have a bit of a strong background. We didn't just come up like that. We didn't just think that AI is going to lead the world. We know that others are doing it as well. However, our background as the UK, it's quite key. We are uh, Oxford Insights, places among the governments that actually are more well prepared in the world among our OECD uh, counterparts in terms of how we prepare for AI, how we consider it in the role that it can play in our economy and society. We do have world leading universities. We actually have the biggest names in the, in the business, and I'm not going to repeat them, you know them all. But we also have large venture capital investments, and I know that Greg and uh, Jared was talking about that earlier on. Venture capital investments that, not that I'm competitive, but in a lot of areas are much, much larger, 10 times than, uh, for example, the VC that activity that's taken part, place in France in the last uh, six years or so. But more importantly, our consumers and our businesses are digitally minded. So we are leading the world in that. And institutions such as the NHS gives us the richness of data with which to make real change in the lives of all of us. So what are our plans then? 
Um, we have started investing across the whole economy and continuing our investment through uh, R&D, uh, great aspiration of 2.4%, money that is coming through universities. An industrial strategy challenge fund, which is quite important. It actually deals and gives out money for specific challenges, theme challenges, money to businesses to be able to lead the way in certain sectors. And the most recent one has been in uh, services and AI, the role that it plays in it. And we will be very um, happy to announce the winners in the next couple of weeks. But first, Gila and I have to go through 60 applications. <laughs> so no weekend for us. Um, we're also driving investment more generally through the British Development Bank, the British Business Bank, that we published, we promised that we will put 2.5 billion pounds in it to cornerstone, to create new funds, new venture capital in the system, and leverage more than 8 billion pounds, 7.5 billion pounds to be, to be precise. <coughs> But as with every strategy that we put forward, we have objectives. It would be nothing without our objectives. And our objectives are bold. And again, I take that as a compliment. The first objective is to put the UK at the center, uh, as a global center for AI and data-driven innovation. The second one is boost our productivity as an economy. Just ensure that AI is adopted and led across quite a lot of, of our businesses. But do all of that in a safe way. Lead the world in a safe and ethical AI and help people develop the skills that they need for the future, for leading businesses, for living their lives. So we're taking two steps. The first one is creating an AI sector deal, which is basically an arrangement, a grouping, a partnership between ourselves, government, the private sector, and of course, academia and research. And that is, not, uh, that is a considerable sum of one billion pounds. But we also, as a good challenge, set ourselves missions. What it is that we're going to achieve? Because a strategy and challenges without a mission our moonshots is pretty much nothing. So our first mission is the PM announced, which is in early diagnostics. And uh, again, uh, Gila will go in a little bit more detail for that. And what I would like to finish by is tell you a few things uh, about ourselves. So Gila and I are something that you very rarely see in partnerships across government. We are a double act, we do a lot of things together, we lead from the centre, we understand very clearly how important it is that government is united when it leads something in something important as our AI. So we do it across our departments and we also cajole and help and push and move a lot of our colleagues to do exactly the same, the same thing. And for that reason we created the Office for AI at the centre of government as a face for you all for interacting with us, for enabling us to find a way across government. And in parallel, we're creating some of the foundations for uh, our, our mission and for our, um, our sector deal, which are in four key pillars, in leadership, in skills and in talent, in uh, data sharing, and of course, in ethics. So let me finish by saying that we are very committed as the UK in attractive, the best research, the best innovation developing in the world, providing investment in AI, Aspiring to world leading standards, we get it, we want to lead it, and we want to reach across the public and private sector to ensure that AI continues to transform the economy. What I would ask from all of you is two things. One, go out there and tell the world that the UK government is leading and getting what needs to be done to make sure that the UK is at the forefront of the AI and data challenge, and spread the word. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rania. So, uh, Gila, Rania talked there about the sector deal itself. So, could you share a little bit more about what the sector deal is? Absolutely. And um, thank you. Uh, well, thank you for having us on this uh, amazing tech week and this amazing uh, centerpiece of it. Let me just build a little. Rania set out the framework, right, and the overall ambitions. But let me just um, tell you a little bit about how do we translate that kind of ambition into, into policy and into nuts and bolts action on the ground. We, whenever we approach um, uh, different aspects of our AI challenge and our AI vision, we, we do so by asking three sets of questions. Right? Firstly, how do we make sure that the building blocks are in place to make sure the UK environment is great for the development, the innovation, the creativity in the AI itself? But secondly, we could do all that. Right? We could make sure the environment's great um, and... Uh, it's a space in which people want to um, take that next step in AI, but how do we make sure that the demand is there, the market is there to adopt, to take up this AI across the economy? And then thirdly, if we do that, so if we get the building blocks right, if we really drive positive adoption of AI, 
Thirdly, how do we make sure that that adoption adds up to something which really benefits society as a whole? What does it mean for the UK? So firstly, what are our building blocks, right? What are the building blocks that the sector deal set out? Well, firstly, skills and talent, right? We know right across technology and in AI, more, you know, as much as anywhere else, right? We are only going to be as good as our ability to attract in and grow the best talent in the world. And we're doing that in a wide range of ways, whether it's training up 8,000 computer science teachers in schools, whether it's developing new master's programs and conversion programs jointly with industry, whether it's massively increasing the number of PhDs, um, uh, in AI in the UK, and then critically developing new prestigious fellowships to make sure we're able to attract and retain the very, very best research talent, because we know talent attracts talent, and without that, nothing else can build. So talent and skills, the talent we grow ourselves and the talent we bring in from outside is absolutely at the heart of our sector deal and our ambition. Secondly, data, right? Well, if you've got the talent there, they need fuel, right? They need stuff to work with. And again, this is an area where we, we're confident that we have a really strong foundation to build on. Because we know that in the UK, we are sitting on some incredibly valuable data sets in the public sector and in the private sector. And when you bring that data, together with the talent that knows how to exploit it, you can do amazing things. So we want to work out how to get more of our most valuable data assets open to use more widely across the industry. We want to develop new, more effective, more trusted ways of sharing data. We're developing ideas around data trust and different models of data exchanges to massively increase the efficiency and confidence in the data sharing process. And critically, we're setting up something called the Centre for Data Ethics and Innovation to advise government and the regulators and industry on how to make sure that our governance landscape and our regulatory framework keeps pace with what data can do and drives responsible and trusted data innovation. So skills and talent and the data to make it fly. But then thirdly, this third building block, is how do we make sure that we have an environment in which Companies who are not AI companies, who are not technology companies, have the confidence um, and the, the vision to really utilize what this technology can do for them. And we're starting with ourselves. So we're trying to work out what else, what more can government do to really lead from the front in the adoption of AI, creating an environment in which different parts of government feel more able to experiment and to learn from what AI can do for them. And we're partnering with a whole host of organizations who are out there trying to support businesses across sectors to take advantage of what AI can do for them, whether that's in the Alan Turing Institute, the Digital Catapult, and a whole host of others. Fourthly, and I think this is really critical, is you know, ultimately AI, for all the incredible things it can do, is one part of a wider technology and, and economic ecosystem. And if that wider environment is strong and healthy, if technology companies and indeed businesses much more widely are able to draw on um, a supportive regulatory environment, a pro-innovation government, um, and the access to capital and talent that they need to thrive, then AI will have fertile ground in which to grow. But finally, we want to make sure that we bring that, we bring that all together and make sure it really works for people. So if we can put these building blocks in place to make sure the UK can do fantastic AI and take advantage of it, how do we make sure that we spread those benefits fairly equitably and across the country? And our missions are one way that we're starting to do that. Starting to ask, what are some, let's not start with the technology. But let's start with some of the big challenges society is grappling with and ask what that technology can do to transform the way we think about and work our way through that challenge. And our missions, and Rania mentioned the first one the Prime Minister announced recently, is, will be to, around looking at how we can use AI and data technologies to transform the early diagnosis and treatment of chronic diseases over the next decade. But critically in doing that, what we want to set out um, you know, a call for action. That we want to, uh, to look at what happens when government puts its, um, its, uh, its capital, right, its assets on the table, but we invite industry, the AI sector itself, academia, and civil society to do its bit too. When we put what we can together around these incredible new technologies, maybe we can bring those technologies to bear on some of the things that really matter to people far, far away from this amazing building. Right? So ultimately, that's what we think we can do with AI in the UK. We want to maximize the economic, but also the societal benefits of these technologies. And we want to be the place that proves those two things don't need to be intention. Right? We don't need to be in the race 
the, of who can build the biggest, fastest, most powerful AI. And we don't need to be in the race for who can keep it safe and minimize the risks. We think we can lead the world in creating pro-innovation regulation and governance and an environment in which the technology can thrive because it works for people and people trust it. So that's the journey that we're pretty near the beginning of. There's a hell of a lot of ambition um, around government and something that we are excited to share um, with, with many of you and your organizations. I um, hope that gives you a little flavor of the work we've got ahead of us. Thank you so much, Gila. Um, I wanted to take just a few minutes to draw on a few of the themes that you identified there and ask for your thoughts. Um, many of the people in the audience today, I suspect, represent smaller companies, SMEs in the tech space. Um, in that very comprehensive uh, evolution of the vision that you've set out there, where do those smaller tech SMEs play a role? Um, I don't know who wants to take that first, but um, so, can I start? start? Gila. So, I mean, you'll see it in, um, in, in AI kind of incredibly, incredibly clearly, but certainly kind of right across technology, that many of the most exciting innovations um, are coming out of often very, very small um, and early stage companies. And what we need to do is make sure that we, um, the government doesn't get in the way. Right? We're confident that the overall environment for enterprise um, and technology enterprise, in particular in the UK, um, is strong. We have um, a tax and investment environment that supports it and that we are continuing to back and make sure remains really fit for some of the challenges that these companies will face in the future. Um, but, more, but more than that, right? we, we know that one of the things, and, and Rania mentioned some of the comparisons with France here, we do a lot of um, work comparing what it is that helps companies kind of start and grow in different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. and, one of the, and it's often the really soft stuff that makes cities in particular really strong. And what we've seen, not just in London, but increasingly in many cities right across the UK, is it's the connections, it's the ecosystem. So yes, as I said, you need the building blocks there, the building blocks that can often be set at national level, but it's really those local connections that can make the difference between whether a place really can capitalize on the potential of its SMEs and really support them. And that's one of the reasons why, amongst other things, the government's investing in, you had Gerard, I think, up here earlier, so he, I won't repeat his, his story, right, but investing in building on the strengths that um, Tech City were able to, um, uh, to kind of help to nurture in London and taking those around the country, helping to invest in and connect up startups and high growth companies around the country, um, not trying to lay out the territory for them, but helping them to help each other, which we know has proved really successful in the past. And if I can add a couple of things, of course, as we said before, uh, AI businesses, tech businesses are part of our ecosystem, are part of the whole uh, eco uh, small and medium enterprise ecosystem in the UK. So we do three extra things to ensure that they all have a fair start and of course the opportunity to scale and grow. The first one is a regulatory environment. I think Gila talks a lot about this. We are a place where businesses, at least AI businesses, start one a week. It's very easy to start a business. It's very easy to close down a business. So I think that's something that uh, very few in the world can actually fault us on. The second one is we're looking at place, we're looking around the country on how we can spread the word. So our investment into Tech Nation is a very good uh, step in that direction, but also through the industrial strategy, we're trying to create ecosystems where government, academe, research, local authorities, they all come together. So we have something we call the local industrial strategies. We're starting with some of the mayoral areas, and it's really, really important to ensure that systems like angel funding, that the ability that we have to, uh, to, to create investment localities, if you like, exist across the world, across the, the UK. And the third one, of course, which is very linked to that, is the British Business Bank. I mentioned before how the British Business Bank is the development bank of the UK. We are putting quite a lot of money to, to further some of those investment objectives in it, but also in themselves, they have a commitment to put more resource and more senior uh, muscle, if you like, across the various regions to ensure that businesses not only can go and get the finance they need, but from the from from uh, from uh, various funds, but also know what to ask for and get the relative advice. And more importantly, and last thing is, how can we bring and build areas of angel investors across the various part of the UK who are some of the who are the lifeline for the first stages on some of those businesses. Fantastic. I'm afraid we're running out of time, ladies and gentlemen, so I do hope you'll join me in thanking Gila Sachs and Dr. Rania Leon-Taridi. Thank you so much.